itself, and it says, um, Wisdom speaks of a personified wisdom in a Trinitarian way at 917. Who has learned your counsel unless you have given wisdom and sent your Holy Spirit from on high? The next verse says that salvation is an act of wisdom. In Christianity, salvation is an, act, is an activity reserved for God. But here it is given into wisdom and thus identifying them with one another. Now, let's look at the Gospel of Thomas real quick. The Gospel of Thomas is a major book they left out of the Bible that I believe should have been in there. I can definitely tell it was divinely inspired just by reading it um, because it holds the old principle that goes all the way back to the ancient times uh, um, that basically speaks of hermetic wisdom, which is also from early Christian writings. If you go back to the religious text, you find that um, the early Christian codices included the Gospel of Thomas and also the Corpus Hermeticum, which is something that a lot of Christians are told to keep away from, but yet this is part of early Christian codice. So when you take a look at the Gospel of Thomas, one of the things that Jesus says is, if your leaders say to you, look, the Father's kingdom is in the sky, then the birds of the sky will precede you. If they say, look, it's in the sea, then the fish will precede you. Rather, the Father's kingdom is within you and is outside you, which is the same thing as as above, so below, as below, so above. It basically means the Father's kingdom, God, is, is everything that exists. It's not a separate entity, and that is what the church has tried to hide from everybody for so long. They've tried to teach you to externalize everything, rather than understand that everything is interconnected, and the universe is a reflection of us, and we are a reflection of the universe. And this is also what they teach in Enlightenment on uh, the Jewish side with the Tree of Life and everything like that. It's a teaching. And, and when you take a look at Christ and the cross, it's going to be hard to get all this in one video, but here's what I want you to notice. When you superimpose Jesus' cross, and this is where it gets back to language being twisted, I believe. Um, you always think of the serpent. They always tell you the serpent's evil, but the serpent's not evil. You see it all over the place, all the way back to ancient times, and what it basically is telling you is the chakra system that exists and enlightenment that exists. If you go back to the Temple of Luxor in Egypt, you find that what they actually have depicted is the whole architecture of man to ductless glands, our chakra system, and how we are tuned to uh, different things in the universe. And you see this caduceus, and you see it all over the place, all the way back to ancient times. This drawing of the Tree of Life right here was done by the priest Kircher, who was a Jesuit priest that lived in the 1600s. Now here's what's interesting. The crown of thorns that Jesus wore, okay? When you superimpose his cross on top of a caduceus, what you find is that the crown of thorns exists where his head is, which is the same place as consciousness, which is the when you go up the planes from the physical plane down here and you move up the chakra system consciousness is at the very top this is the the old mystery teachings the teachings from ancient egypt that they would kill you for if you read or uh, if you tried to talk about when constantine got into power and converted to christianity they did not want people to know this information if you take a look at this person right here this is the uh, superior uh, mother goddess of the tibet well, what she's wearing is a crown of thorns. And if you notice what's above her head is a caduceus. What you have is you have a caduceus, um, you have this serpent in all the cases moving up this tree of life or the chakra system. Um, and then you also see in Kircher's drawing that at the very top here you see a crown of thorns at the consciousness level. The reason why is because when your Sahara uh, chakra opens at the very top, it's, uh, it's also referred to as your crown chakra, which is also referred to as a crown of thorns. Um, and so what I believe is, is what they have taught is I think Jesus was an, a, a, an enlightened man to the point where he reached a state of consciousness that, that very few people have ever reached. But the superior mother goddess of the Tibet reached it, and there were also a few other people that reached that as well. These Tibetan monks that we know that have these abilities that are amazing because they've learned how to control their mind and through enlightenment and so forth. And so what I'm saying is, is that I'm saying that Jesus did exist. I'm saying that he was a very enlightened man, but I'm not necessarily saying he's God. God is, is universal consciousness, in my opinion. And from all the analysis that I've done and everything that I've found all over the place, 
this is what I believe. Um, and you also have to go and take a look at the, uh, the similarities that you will find in the, uh, in, the, in the Bible versus what you find in astrotheology and stars. Because you can look in the Catholic Church, you can look in the Jesuit Church, and you can see the Orion Nebula posted all over the place. Um, they're showing you that, for example, this is the Orion Nebula in all these places. You can always see the Trinity, and they're showing you this womb of creation here. So anyways, that's my response. Um, what I'm saying is the Bible is divinely inspired, but I would like to point your, your folks over to all these other books as well that were left out of the Bible by the Catholic Church because I think once you read the whole thing and you actually take a look at the Corpus Hermeticum, which is the Hermetic uh, ancient teachings, you find that there's all it changes the whole way the Bible looks. The Bible is still a wonderful book and I do believe it was divinely inspired. I just believe that the words have been twisted by the church and that they provided you a very small portion of what you should be reading. So that's my response. Thank you very much. I really appreciate responses like you gave me and I will talk to you soon.